All right, hello and welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 142. Uh, there is a lot to get into today. So it is, as of when I'm recording this, officially free agency. Um, obviously, the couple days leading up to it was the legal tampering period. And it feels like more so this year than other years, the legal tampering period almost accounted for all of the moves that were made. Like almost everything happened during legal tampering and then it got to actual free agency at what, like four o'clock on today, the 13th. And there was just like a couple moves left to be made. It felt like so much of the decisions and the the movement already happened um, in these the two days leading up to it. So, so much to get into. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure I cover at least all all of the important Browns things as well as all of the important things that happened in the rest of the league. Um, so we'll just kind of start with um, the Browns news before we get into kind of everyone else. Um, so the first thing that the Browns did actually happened before the legal tampering period started, and this was a trade. This is this was a classic Andrew Berry trade, um, very reminiscent of the Amari Cooper trade a few years back, where he traded some late round picks um, for Amari Cooper, who they wanted to get rid of his contract, didn't want to pay him. So the Browns said, hey, we really want to get this guy um, and we w are willing to give up the, you know, some late round picks to take on this contract. They did that for Amari Cooper. And now they have made a similar move for Jerry Judy, who has been rumored. Uh, I mean, if you're a Browns fan, you know that these rumors have been going on for at least a year, if not two years, um, about the Browns potential interest in Jerry Judy uh, and, you know, I think up until this point, it felt like they were going to have to give up a lot more to get him. Uh, I know last year the rumored pick was a second round pick in a trade for Jerry Judy or potentially even players in a trade. And uh, Andrew Barry working his magic using patience um, traded a fifth and a sixth round pick for him. They take on a $12.9 million cap hit for just one year. Um, and look, when honestly three days ago, that felt like more money than it does today because you start seeing the way that different free agents are getting overpaid and you say, hey, it's not too bad. That's the same way we felt about the Amari Cooper contract when that was signed. It was like at first, oh, this is kind of a lot of money to take on. And then you start seeing some of the other deals come in for lesser players and free agency and you feel pretty good um, about the move that you made there. So, um, you know, I think this is a pick that people feel one of two ways about. I think everyone is in agreement that like, it's good. They didn't have to give up a lot to get this, this, this player. Um, and, and it feels good to only have to say a fifth and a sixth round pick, um, low risk and, you know, potentially high reward. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that feel, that this wasn't a good choice because of Jerry Judy's relationship with the team and the fan base in Denver became extremely sour. He was unhappy. He was vocally speaking about how he was unhappy. It was just not going well there. Um, and so I think some people are worried about that kind of translating over to him in Cleveland. And then, you know, the other group of people are like, why not take a shot at something like this where you're not giving up much? It's very low risk, um, but there's still so much potential there. He is a former first round draft pick um, and you're not giving up a lot for that, putting him in a better situation than he's been in in his career in Denver, he has gone through a quarterback carousel that has not been extremely successful, a lot of turnover. Um, so I think, you know, the, the upside there is that if you put him in a better environment, that maybe you're able to see him have some more success. I'm really in that second camp. I think that there is no downside to making this, um, just based on the upside there with Judy. I, I also, really feel like the Browns didn't want to overspend in free agency on another guy. And um, they felt like this was a manageable amount of money to take on. Um, so I think, I think it makes a lot of sense on both sides. And look, he could end up not working out and it could be kind of a bust, but you know, you just hope um, 
that it was worth, you know, this, this really low risk move. So I, I feel really good about that. So that kind of kicked off things, um, in a, in just really setting us up for this week of legal tampering and free agency. Um, okay. So I want to go over a couple of the re-signings first that the Browns made before I go into some of the new players that they have picked up throughout free agency. So three of the guys that they re-signed that I felt like were important for me to cover are Zadarius, Mohurst, and Shelby Harris. So Zadarius is back on a two-year deal worth $23.5 million in base salary with an upside of $25 million. Um, I felt really good about bringing him back. He was second on the team in sacks behind Miles, um, played really well opposite Miles the whole season. I felt like he got some unfair criticism throughout the year, and I'm still not totally sure why that was. Maybe just some of I don't know, some of the production numbers in certain games maybe weren't as flashy as people would have liked, but I thought he did a really nice job opposite Miles the entire season. And with the way, you know, that defensive line played last year, uh, I think you would rather try to fix some of the defensive tackles and feel good about bringing Zadarius back at edge. Uh, so I I really appreciated that they, they were able to get that done. Then Mohurst is a one-year, $3.2 million deal. Um, I felt like he was a pretty important part of the interior. He's obviously coming back from that pec injury that took him out um, for you know the rest of the season once he got hurt. So I, I thought he was doing well before that and would like to you know see, obviously, have him back. So I, I feel good about that one. Not a lot of money there, so nothing too crazy. And then the Shelby Harris deal is two years, $9 million. Once again, kind of low dollar value amount, but you feel good um, about what you saw from him last year. And look, as much as we want them to go get fun and exciting free agents, it's important to bring back guys who know your system, are comfortable in your system, have you know started building something together, especially within a unit that had so, so much success last year. Um, so you feel good about bringing some of those guys back. All right, so some of the new players that we will be seeing in the building um, I will start with linebacker Jordan Hicks, uh, two-year, $8 million deal. Little background on him. Um, he played with, for Jim Schwartz previously in Philly. He was on some of those um, really successful teams that went quite far. So he has um, a lot of success playing in that defense, um, in a Jim Schwartz-style defense, and you know, obviously would know what to expect. Jim Schwartz knows what to expect from him. Um, I think it's good to have a little bit of a veteran presence back in that linebacker room, considering that um, a walk is gone. I, I was going to speak on him later in this, but um, they did make the decision to move on from Anthony Walker and not re-sign him. He signed with the Dolphins, a one-year deal. I couldn't find the the dollar figures when I was writing the notes for this, but one-year deal with, with Miami. So um, felt like you needed a veteran presence in that linebacker group. Um, and so Jordan Hicks was moved there. I didn't know this, but I did see somewhere that he is from Westchester. So um, familiar with the Northeast Ohio area, uh, which we always love to see. Um, so I thought that was a, a good pickup there to make. And, um, you know, always good to have someone familiar with the system that you're going to be playing in. Um, okay. The, I think, craziest move that... Um, I personally wasn't expecting. Some people might have had him on their radar, but um, up until like maybe the day before when I started seeing reports that the Browns had interest, uh, I had not had this on my radar in any way, shape, or form. And that was Jameis Winston, who is now the backup quarterback on the Cleveland Browns. I mean, th we have a very interesting quarterback room at this point in time. I, I, have, I have no words to say about it. It's just like, what are we what are we doing in terms of like personalities and people we're bringing in this into this locker room? But in terms of contract, we had a one-year deal for him worth up to 8.7 million. It's 4 million guaranteed. Um, you know, I know he has a previous relationship with Deshaun. So, you know, I'm sure they felt good about bringing someone in who has that relationship with him and, you know, wants to work well with him and, you know, help him to succeed. Um, 
I, you know, after having some time to think about this move, as shocked as I was and as much as I felt like they would probably maybe bring back a Joe Flacco or just go a different route, um, I thought this was a good move just to prepare for, for someone who's taken a lot of NFL snaps and could step in at, you know, a moment's notice because as we have seen, if history tells us anything about this quarterback room, injuries are going to happen. Deshaun Watson is, you know, a pretty, he has been a pretty injured quarterback throughout his history in this league and throughout his time in college. Um, DTR had injuries last season. It was something that obviously plagued that group. So I think it's really important to have multiple backup plans in place. So I feel good about bringing someone in who is comfortable just coming in, you know, has come in for many different teams and, and will be able to fit in in that way. So um, shocking, but you know, we will take it. Um, okay. Running back move, Naeem Hines, uh, one year, three and a half million dollar deal coming from Buffalo. So obviously he has the Ken Dorsey connection. I think a lot of times when you see these free agent moves, you can trace them back to connections that they've had with offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators in, um, other stops that they've played in. So, you know, we saw that with what I had just mentioned with Jordan Hicks, seeing that again with Hines, um, having that connection with Ken Dorsey. Um, I thought this was, you know, a good enough move if they weren't going to sign one of the bigger running back names. I was honestly kind of hoping for Aaron Jones, but um, they ended up going this route. Um, I thought it was good in terms of needing a pass catching running back, which I don't think Jer Jerome Ford has proven at this point in time that he is capable of excelling in that way. So um, I'm not totally shocked um, to see them want to go, you know, at least bring in some other bodies into the running back room. Obviously, I've been talking about that on this podcast, that Nick Chubb isn't going to be coming back right away. You need to have other plans in place. Um, I don't think this means that anything is happening with Nick Chubb in terms of them wanting to move on from him. Um, I just think that they needed more options in this room. So thought that was a, a decent choice. Um, okay. The one other move that I wanted to talk about is um, offensive tackle Hakeem Adenji. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, 26 years old, one-year deal. I think tackle depth is obviously important with all the injuries that have happened to the offensive tackles in the last couple of years to Conklin, to Jed, to Dewand. Like, there's always injuries to the tackle, so you can never have too much depth there. Um some background on him. He started at both guard and tackle while he was on the Bengals. So some versatility there in terms of being able to move around on the line. Um, last season, he only played in four games for the Vikings. Uh, so not a ton there, but he's probably someone who's going to be competing for a roster spot, I think could be a decent depth piece to have. Um, okay, so some Browns players that are going elsewhere. One I already mentioned, obviously, Anthony Walker to the Dolphins. Um, Jordan Elliott, who has been a part of this team for quite a few years now, um, signed a two-year $10 million deal with the 49ers, which um, I am perfectly comfortable with moving on from Jordan Elliott. I think it just never quite got to be what we wanted it to be in Cleveland. So um, I was actually kind of shocked to see him get a deal like that from the 49ers. Uh, the Patriots signed Taki Taki, two years, six and a half million, up to 10.3 with incentives. Um, I was uh, slightly disappointed to see him go because I just think, uh, you know, he's been here for a couple years and he's um, improved so much as a player, but I'm happy for him to, you know, get a, a really good deal for him up to 10.3 10 with incentives is awesome. And he gave a lot of good years to Cleveland. So um, wish the best for him for sure. And um, the last one, Harrison Bryant, one year, $3.25 million with a max of $4 million. Uh, he has gone out of Cleveland. I, um, I don't think a lot of Browns fans are sad to see him go. Um, unfortunately, I just feel like he, he had a few tough beats over the years in Cleveland where it was bad drops and crucial moments. Um, or maybe they try to do some weird, like... Um, 
trick play with Harrison Bryant involved where he kind of messes it up. Like I feel like that happened a couple of times. So I think he kind of soured a little bit with the Cleveland fan base. Um, and, you know, I think it makes sense to maybe either go to the draft or just get some younger talent and start working on that um, for a another tight end on this roster because obviously you already have David and, and feel pretty good about that. Uh, okay, so there are a couple of players I wanted to touch on that had rumors about maybe coming to the Browns um, where it obviously didn't happen. The first being Christian Wilkins, who I talked about, I think, last episode. He signed a four-year, $110 million deal with $84.75 million guaranteed with the Raiders. Um, massive, massive deal. The Browns were never in any world going to pay him that much. So I think, you know, the hope was kind of that maybe he wanted to go to a contender or a team that he felt like had more potential, more than just getting a bag. Um, very clearly, he wanted to get a bag. I don't think he thinks that the Raiders are a massive contender. Um, so, you know, you don't feel too bad about this because I think the Browns were just out of, of the range that you were willing to pay for a defensive tackle like that. Um, the rumors of, you know, these weren't even rumors, I guess, during this the past year of mostly just Browns fans saying, hey, T. Higgins, just shoot on up the highway, state of Ohio, come on up to Cleveland, because um, obviously there's been concerns about whether or not the Bengals were going to be able to sign both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins to long-term extensions after paying Joe Burrow when they're a team that has a history of not playing payers and paying players in general. Um, I, you know, wasn't super shocked to see that T. Higgins requested to be traded. Um, no movement on that yet, but I think, you know, if they weren't able to come to any agreement and the money wasn't going to work, wasn't sh super shocking to see uh, that T. had put in that request. Now, obviously, the conversations about the Browns were happening before they made that move for Jerry Judy, so I don't see that this move is going to happen at this point in time, but, um, you know, I think it's interesting that he's out there, and I'm, I'm fascinated to see where he ends up landing. It, it'll, it'll be um, one that is, everyone is going to be watching out for. Um, and the last one, this isn't a player that's been rumored with the Browns, but an ex-Browns player, Baker Mayfield. He got an extension, three years, 50 million guaranteed, up to 100 million. Um, I honestly thought that the guarantees would be a little bit higher for him. I thought maybe in the 20 to 25 uh, a year range, it's more like 16 to 17 a year range for guarantees. But look, this is um, this is awesome for Baker because. Um, you know, at one point, honestly, going into this past season, it was like you're competing for a job with Kyle Trask and we have no idea who was going to win. He was on, you know, a really small one year deal with the Buccaneers after having a really bad year um, with Carolina, where he was one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. He showed some life in those couple of games in L.A. with the Rams um, and got another opportunity in Tampa Bay made the most of it and, you know, won a playoff game. Obviously, you know, they were the worst division in all of football, but nonetheless, he was able to get that done and got an extension. So um, really cool for him because at one point it felt like, is this guy just going to maybe be a backup in this league? Like you just didn't know if he had it in him to continue uh, being a starter. So uh, cool to see that. Uh, okay, so other moves outside of the Browns related world that I want to talk about. I have, I don't know, maybe like eight different moves here that I felt like were interesting enough for us to discuss. Um, the first being Mac Jones. Um, man, what a fall from grace for Mac Jones and just the Patriots in general. Like the Patriots dynasty obviously has been collapsed for a few years, but gosh, a fall from grace to have... Mac Jones drafted. Everyone in the Patriots world is like, this is the guy. He had a great rookie year where it felt like there was so much potential. The sky's the limit. And then it just all crumbles and falls apart to the point now that he's being, you know, traded over to Jacksonville for next to nothing is going to be 
a backup there behind Trevor Lawrence, um, which is, is really crazy. Um, look, I don't feel any really anything strongly about this from Jacksonville's perspective. I think, you know, they've had quarterback injury issues. Uh, so I think it makes sense to have um, some backup plans there in place. But uh, it is just weird to think that uh, those two are going to be in the same quarterback room, how far we've come from just a couple years ago um, from that draft. So uh, pretty crazy. Um, I guess this is this next one is somewhat Browns related because it affects the Browns within their division. And there's a couple moves that I want to talk about that will affect the Browns within their division. But the first being Russell Wilson to Pittsburgh. I cannot think of a guy that fits less with a city than Russell Wilson fits with Pittsburgh. I feel like that fan base is going to eat him alive as soon as things start not going well. Um, I just don't think it seems like a match. I personally thought that the Steelers were going to be way more interested in Justin Fields than they would be Russell Wilson. Look like Russell Wilson is up there in age at this point. Um, and has not shown a lot of life in the last couple of years. I think Justin Fields is younger. He's just coming, you know, towards the end of his rookie deal. There's a lot of upside there. I just thought that they would be way more interested in Justin Fields. So, hey, look, I'll take it because I don't think Russell Wilson is going to find success in Pittsburgh, but um, I, I think I would rather have that as an opponent than I would have them taking a shot with Justin Fields and seeing what would happen. Um, another move that the Steelers actually made, made was to trade Deontay Johnson to the Panthers. It was a, um, a cornerback came back to the Steelers as well as a pick swap. Um, I thought that was interesting in terms of like you're trading for Russell Wilson and you're getting rid of one of your receivers that showed, you know, any little bits of success on, on that team. So I, I just thought that was an interesting move to be made, but um, look, I, I, I don't know. Pittsburgh is in a weird spot, but I always think they're in a weird spot and Mike Tomlin still manages to have them go over 500 every season. It would be kind of hilarious if Russell Wilson was the reason they had the first below 500 season in forever. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't really understand that one whatsoever. Um, okay. Another quarterback move. Kirk Cousins is now an Atlanta Falcon. I have never seen another human being manage to be as smart with their NFL career as Kirk Cousins has. Like just in terms of compensation for the value that he brings, he has just continuously overshot that in every contract. This deal is four years, 180 million. Um, I don't think this made any sense at all for Atlanta to do there. Some of these moves, I'm just like, what are we doing? Atlanta in terms of how they're looking at the quarterback position is beyond confusing. A couple of years ago, when everything was happening with Deshaun Watson being available for teams to trade, Atlanta was one of the teams that was like really all in from day one, from the jump, they were ready to go. And honestly felt like for a long time, that's where Deshaun was going to end up. And, um, they were, they were fully in on it. And then obviously he ended up in Cleveland. It didn't happen. Then last off season, you have everything with Lamar Jackson, him being, you know, very forthright about wanting to get a fully guaranteed deal. And, you know, he has shown so much success in this league. And for some reason, like no team was interested in it, which is funny because he just won MVP, but it was, um, it was interesting to watch. And Atlanta, after being like, we want to give so much to Deshaun Watson. We we're not really interested in Lamar Jackson though. That doesn't that doesn't interest us. That made no sense to me. And then for them to go this year say, eh, I know Kirk Cousins is 35 years old and he just had an Achilles injury, an extremely serious injury at age 35. But we're actually going to give him 4 years, 180 million. That feels so crazy to me and it feels no there it feels like there's no logic from one year to the next up and down based on what they are doing in terms of how they look at their quarterback room and um where they want to go. I I don't think they even know where they want to go. Um so I feel like that's kind of crazy. Look, it's a bad division so they could maybe find some success, but I just I really don't 
um, understand believing in 35 year old Kirk Cousins coming off of a major injury in a way where you want to give him that much money and that long of a deal. I think they can get out of it. I want to say I looked at it after two years, um, but still it just, uh, it feels like that was a, a bit of a wild move for them to make. Um, so in return, obviously the Vikings out of quarterback, they signed Sam Darnold. So not, um, not, not a big shot there, a one year, $10 million deal, which was way more than I would have given Sam Darnold. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if they want to take a shot later in the draft. I'm not sure really what their plan is, but, um, Sam Darnold is, uh, maybe going to be a starter again. I, I feel like honestly him going as a backup in San Francisco was like a great move for him because you can just kind of maybe have like, oh, I'm in this good system and I, I could show maybe like little moments of me being a good team player and I'm on a really good team. So maybe someone will just be interested in signing me eventually if, you know, they wait long enough and forget that I'm not that good of a quarterback. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what happened with Sam Darnold. So he will be a Minnesota Viking. Um, okay, so then a couple running back moves that I want to discuss. Interestingly enough, there were a lot of running back moves that came quickly and, um, you know, big names. Uh, the money wasn't crazy. Obviously, it was a little bit better, but the cap also went up. So I think that kind of balanced itself out in a way. So I don't think running backs are necessarily making more money in terms of percentage of the cap, um, but on an individual level, it felt like they were getting some better, better deals here. So we had Saquon to Philly, which was um, a, you know, a big move in terms of fan bases. I feel like that is a, is an interesting one. Saquon, I think might have um, some fans though, actually in Philly because of the Penn State connection. And, um, I I'm assuming there's probably a lot of people in Philly who are Penn state fans, just, you know, having that within the state. So, uh, he signed a three year, $37.75 million deal up to 46.75 million. Um, I felt like this was a good move for them. Look, they still, obviously Jason Kelsey is gone. So that's going to affect some of what they do at offensive line, but I think they still have a solid unit there, honestly, between him and Jalen hurts, just those big bodies there behind the line. I'm really interested to see what that offense looks like. Look, I don't think this solves all of the Eagles problems because obviously we watched, they had a ton of issues, um, last season, especially in the back half of the year, but look, you got to take shots sometimes. And I think this is fun for Philly fans because there's nothing more fun than being able to bring a big name like running back or receiver and you just get to get so excited about them like watching all of their highlights from their previous teams um just really predicting what the future could look like I think it's really exciting when you get a player like that so good for Philly um Texans traded for Joe Mixon another running back move they gave up a, a seventh round pick barely anything for it um I'm not really sure what the Bengals are doing right now. It feels like um, they're in a weird position where they pay Joe Burrow so much money that they are kind of freaking out about what to do in other places. Um, so they officially moved on from Joe Mixon. Um, I thought this was a good move for the Texans. The Texans, I, I don't have a lot of their moves on my list to discuss today, but I felt like they made quite a few um, good moves. And look, they are in a really good spot in terms of being able to spend because of being on a rookie quarterback contract with CJ, knowing what you have with CJ already and feeling like there's you know, so much upside there, so much potential, already saw so much from him and having a playoff win that, um, they're able to spend money in other areas, and they definitely did that. So I think the Texans are going to be a really good team this coming season. And I feel like Joe Mixon was was a good move for them to make. Um, and then another move that will affect the Browns within di the division, Derrick Henry to the Ravens. Scary, 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 scary. Um, I, I feel similarly about like Saquon and, and Jalen Hurts there behind the line. I feel... Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson behind the line there is a scary matchup in terms of a run game. So um, it was a, I, th I don't know if I already said, a two-year $16 million deal. Um, you know, the Ravens just are 
continuing to evolve as an offense. They evolved so much this last year um, with what they did with Lamar. I think um, Derrick Henry is going to be scary. So that was the last of the moves I wanted to cover. Um, that was quite a bit, and I feel like I rolled through it really fast, but there was so much that I feel like happened that I wanted to make sure I touched on every every move that I felt like was important. Obviously, over the coming weeks, we'll kind of dig into what this means for the Brown, you know, the moves for the Browns mean more for the team as a whole, what these units are going to start looking like, then figuring out where we need to plug in pieces within the draft because um, you know, obviously free agency happens first and then you then you look to the draft. So we'll kind of start looking at that there on um, what, what moves are going to be made. So um, exciting stuff to come. This is, this is still a fun part of, I feel like, the NFL world leading up to the draft. I start getting antsy after the draft when I'm like, okay, now what do we do? We have to wait until like maybe we have like the schedule release, but there, there's a couple slow months there where there's really nothing going on. So this is at least still exciting. Lots of things to talk about. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I really, really appreciate it. If you could please leave a review or rating. Um, I would love that. Follow, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Comment on the YouTube and subscribe on the YouTube. Very much appreciate that. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. As always, it is always going to be Go Browns.